Hi everyone, welcome back. I am Bindu. And I'm Sunny. So yeah, we are back with another video on JSON CLI JSON. In our previous video, we discussed about CLI JSON and how JSON CLI JSON is done in Flutter. Now in this video onward, we will dive deeper into the methods of JSON serialization. So Sani, are we starting from the manual one? Uh, yes, today we will see a manual way of JSON serialization in Flutter and we will also discuss its advantages and disadvantages. As we all know, Flutter uses Dart as a programming language. And for your information, Dart has an inbuilt library for JSON encoding and decoding. It's called Dart Convert. This library provides two functions to perform serialization. They are JSON encode and JSON decode. JSON encode takes the object as a parameter and converts it into a JSON string, whereas JSON decode does just the opposite. It takes JSON string as an input and results in the corresponding object. Uh, let's take this as an example here i have created a variable called person and assigned with this value now if i pass this person as a parameter to json encode function then it converts it into a json string now if i give this json string as a parameter to json decode function then it will convert back it into its original form here as you can see i have printed all those values here after encoding uh, it is converted into its string representation and decoding back this data will result into its original form so this is how json encode and json decode works in dart so any problem up to here bindu um yes now that i've got clear about how json encode and decode works so can you tell me how this functions can be used in a project okay but first of all let me tell you that uh, normally we use these functions inside a model class uh, technically let's say we perform json serialization inside a model class the model class is simply a representation of our json data and representation in a sense that we create our model by looking at the structure of a json object so the model class will have have variables and methods we map each key of the JSON object to the instance variable of a class and its methods will have all the logic to perform serialization. Uh, as you can see here, this is the sample JSON we are going to use in our project. And uh, here see company name has a value of type string, whereas company contact has a value of type object. Similarly, this employees has a list of JSON object inside it. So, but for now, let me just take one JSON object and try to create a model class for it. Here, I have created a class called employee, which has these four properties or let's say instance variables. I've also created a named constructor called employee.fromJSON and another class method called toJSON. The purpose of this named constructor is to create an instance of this class by taking an input of map data type. This map data type will be received after we decode the JSON string like this. Similarly, the purpose of this method is to convert an instance of employee class to map data type by using instance variables, which later will be encoded into a JSON string like this. This looks simple, right? But when the size of JSON structure grows and starts becoming nested, then our model class becomes very messy. Let me show you the complete model for our sample JSON.
don't you think this is a lot of code for such a small thing yeah it's a lot of code uh not only this look here how it also quickly turned into having complex logic and imagine the time it takes to write each line of code like this for the numbers of JSON structures there is also a high chance that you will end up making so many typo mistakes don't you think so yeah it seems little daunting yes it is but for now let's forget this part um, let me show you how we can use this model class and display the information in the example app all right uh, one more thing since we are fetching data from a remote server we have to make a network request for this we use a package called http let's firstly grab this package from pop the tip let's make sure whether our package is installed or not See, this is how we do session serialization manually in Flutter project. So Bindu, how did you feel about writing all this code by yourself? Well, that seems too complex for me. So I think this is where code generation becomes handy, right? Yes, but if you use code generation for session serialization, you have to grab a few other packages from pop.dev. If you do not want this, then I have something called app.quicktype.io. This is a website which will help you to create a model class without you having to write a single code by yourself. See, I have just pasted our sample session here and it has created all the model classes for us with all those complex serialization logic okay so i think this is what beginners want because this seems too easy now so this is all for today in the next video we will be talking about code generation method till then keep watching